I'm here at the Horden Pavilion with the one and only James Dean Bradfield from Manic Street Preachers. He's just finished his sound check and uh, we thought what a great opportunity to give him a little question on uh, on rugby but also see how the tour's going. Have you, uh, have you been enjoying it so far? How are you doing up there, Lewis? Um, Good, thanks. Um, yeah, it's been great actually. It's, you know, we didn't ever, I've, not, I've always wanted to do a Lions tour or like a Wales to Argentina kind of tour. Yeah. And they're the two things I've wanted to do. And uh, when I've had a chance and I saw a job, I'd afforded us the opportunity to, yeah. to mix work and pleasure. Well, pleasure and pleasure. Was that a coincidence? Was that a bit of a coincidence? Well, I, you I think to... my, you know, my wife won't mind me saying this, you know, I said, oh, we're doing these gigs in Australia, New Zealand, and right about, you know, uh, July, June, July next year kind of thing. And she was like, oh, okay. And it clicked about two hours later. Isn't that when? That Lions thing is going on. <laughs> like, so I've nearly got away with it. But no, it's it's you know, we missed the first test but kind of just felt yeah, I've got I've got a young kids, you know, I've mm. got a you know, nineteen month old baby, uh, the rest of the boys got kids and just just had this inkling that kind of if it didn't do it now, yeah. I wouldn't be doing it until I was probably retired till I was yeah. sixty, something like that. So I like I say it's mixing pleasure and pleasure and it's, it has been brilliant to Mixed with like you know, <clears throat> you know, English, Scottish, and Irish fans as well. It, is, it has been truly an experience. People think it's corny when you talk about it. But it is, it is really good. You know, I'd, I'd been up to Welf, you know, Welford Road many times mm. uh, with Cardiff Blues, and I, I'd had a small taste of it then because I got called Shaking Stevens and stuff like that. <laughs> Oi, Shaking Stevens, sit down and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like that, but even more better home on a line store. It's really cool. Yeah, I've, uh, the atmosphere that's been going on out here, I've loved just walking down the streets and seeing yeah. the fans get together because it's weird as a player. Well, you guys are the rock stars, aren't you? Well, yeah. no, I yeah. don't know about it. You, you are the rock star. No, I was no. here no, last I can Friday tell you, in the crowd. And, and kind of was... Metaphorically and physically, we're well in the shade. Don't worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> but, but talk to me about that quickly. So I was here last Friday and uh, you had one of the Lions boys, Jamie. Hugh Roberts up on the, up on the yeah. stage during uh, You Love Us. It was, How yeah. How did that come about? Well, kind of, Cardiff is kind of, you know, it's not the biggest city. Yeah. And I'm a Cardiff Blues fan and, you know, I'm now and again by the Burger Stall. I've kind of, I think the first time I met Jamie was by the Burger Stall in, in the Arms Park and I chatted to him, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And he was obviously a big music fan. And I uh, kept bumping into him. Uh, he was usually at Yo Sushi. Yeah. <laughs> kind of what thing. is it? The boys always around. I know. Yo it's, sushi. It's the rugby's favourite kind of like you know yeah. kind of recreational protein intake. It's either Yo Sushi, sushi or Nando's. <laughs> and we're not plugging both of these, but uh, that is what happens. Yeah, I bet players. you're not. I bet you've done a link up there, but um, but you know, I'm kind of just always bumping into him and stuff, and just kind of got to know him. He's an easy guy to know. He's a great yeah. fella, you know. And I uh, and he was always in the cafe by our by our studio. And so he popped in the studio a couple of times, uh, and he started knocking out a couple of tunes on the guitar. And he was he was quite nifty, I gotta say, you know. Uh, he was doing, I think he was about twelve bars in or something. I was like, "Fuck, that's Angie by the Rolling Stones." He was just like, oh, "I didn't recognise it. Oh, that means I'm playing just better." Just knocking it out. Was yeah, he in the yeah. coffee shop doing that? No, or? no, he, because oh, the okay. coffee. He's gonna have the cafe. He's just by our studio. It's just like oh. twenty yards away. Um, so he had a lend of the guitar. We've never seen it back. He still got it. Um, he's gone off to race a metro now, so I won't see him ever again. That'll be it. You won't get the guitar it. It's back. gone, you know. But it's a good guitar as well. Yeah. And I just got to know him, and he likes his music. And for a laugh, I just said, you know, before we came out, yeah, if you fancy doing a song on stage with us, go for it. I didn't think he'd take us up, but then I saw kind of the mindset of the sportsman. Yeah. They actually, sportsmen think they can do anything. It's a challenge. <laughs> no, I know. And it's it. impressive, to be yeah. honest. You know, it's kind of. I uh, so cut to backstage at Melbourne. Went through the song through the song with him twice, and then it was about ten minutes before we went on, and he had like he was cradling a drink. And I was like, "Oi, no drink, no drink before you go on stage with us." It's the professionals. It's, it's professional. We're professionals, bro. <laughs> and um, but it was just that kind of inner confidence. He just wanted to do it, yeah. and it was brilliant. You know, I mean, look, I don't want to go on about it, but I'm quite diminutive in, in stature, kind of thing. And yeah. suddenly I had a six foot two over you and six foot five over there. I was like. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's Jesus. depressing, isn't it? Because Jay, Jamie's <laughs> a back as well. He's like twice the I size know, of me these I days. Know. No, I know. But he, he was really cool about it. And it's probably more of a thrill for us than it was yeah. for him. You know, he'll probably go for an upgrade next time. He'll be cold playing next I time. I can tell you now, mate, he loved every minute of it. He came off that stage and he was absolutely, absolutely he's, buzzing. He's going to upgrade, I know he is. But anyway, it's cool. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just. How did he get, how, did, how was his performance? Was it, was it good? Was it we haven't reviewed the tips yet. Okay. We haven't reviewed But I think he was kind of the glue. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he was doing some deep calf. He was doing some of, deep calf lunges. Nice position, but kind of like he was doing a lot of the unwanted stuff like Richard L used to for England. The graft. Yeah, the graft. The graft and the glue. The behind the scenes graft. It really was, yeah. So kind of like um, Keith Richards used to say the acoustic guitar is the kind of space between the left and the right speaker and it binds everything together. 
So, you know, Jamie Roberts, the first ever Man Shoot preacher to play for the British Lions. Brilliant. Well, let's hope he can pull it all together. <laughs> let's hope he can pull it all together at the weekend because he's going to be the glue in the side. He's we'll now see. coming for a Driscoll, isn't he? So. We're all scared now. You know, we just are. And there's been a... It's, you know, it's been a bit chippy back home with the journalists and stuff about the selection. But, um, you know, we, I think every Lions fan is just always in the same boat. Yeah, they want to see whether they're Scottish, Irish, English or Welsh. You want to see some of your players in the side. And we've been for the Baron years, you know, in the 90s, where we didn't see many Welsh players sometimes, especially in 93, you know, um, when you know, a lot of the players were English. It was 11, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 11 yeah. in the second test, I think. And, I remember just was still being desperate for the Lions to win, you know. Um, so you've got to bypass all that. You've got to bypass all politics, which we have in the past as Welsh fans, because you know we had a fallow period in terms of the Lions. And I'm just, you know, I'm just desperate for us to win, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to do a losing tour. No. <laughs> you know? I've done one, mate. I do. Yeah, I, I do. It, well, it is, it's depressing. What well, do you want to do? We're talking about, you know, metaphorically, but yeah. I've done some losing tours as well. Don't worry. <laughs> and um, especially in France. And, uh, <laughs> that's a tough place. That's even a tough, tough place, place to play rugby. It is, yeah, yeah. I've got to be careful. My wife's our friend, so I've got to be careful. Oh, it doesn't matter who's in the team, we're just desperate for what um, And, you know, we've all got our opinions about the team, we've all got our opinions about the second row. We've, that seems to be where all the strongest opinions amongst fans What are. do you think about Alan and Jones? Because he's coming as captain. How, how do you feel about I that? I think he's just Good kind choice. of, I think he's, he's just the kind of player that gives, you know, younger locks a lot of hope. You know, I remember when Alan yeah. I mean, first came around and, he was a bit like up top and stuff and everything and just you know you didn't notice it but suddenly he just changed into this much more physical player over he's the course of five years as well, he's huge. genius you know, yeah i absolutely love him and it's a thin line when you see a kind of player crying at the anthem and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff but with him it works it really does you know but i remember when he first started you know a lot of people said he didn't have enough up top and he didn't have enough go forward and he didn't carry it you know over the, the first yard and then you know without even noticing the years went by and suddenly he was just a warrior he was just a go-to guy you know yeah we we all could be you know, gonna miss Ben up now um O'Connell definitely you know I saw him walking around today and we'd love to love him being there you know I'd love to I'm not trying to sound too magnanimous but I'd love to have seen Richie Gray have a chance you know I'm really well, he's, he's got an opportunity he's on the bench I know this he is. week so and I made up for Parlin yeah you know, Parlin so he's great yeah. he's 29 and he's a fucking lion now yeah. so kind of you know not I'm not trying to be too magnanimous with you I'm not putting on a Political face, you know, yeah. you just are made up for these players. You are. Yeah, I thought you're just coming across as a genuinely passionate fan, which is. Uh, I am. Well, it's kind of. I've been. I've. I've I think we all are. I mean, Nick is much worse than me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's I've a, just he's been a, chatting with him now. Actually, he's got some good. As, as good they say, opinions. as they say in Australia, he's a real stato. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. He's proper. Um, but kind of, we've all been tested through the fire of having, you know, being a Welsh rugby fan in the in the, the nineties was tough. You know, they, they were barren years. They? <laughs> they really I, were, man. I remember a couple of my first games <laughs> playing like, against Wales. It was like 50 50 nil, I think. It was yeah, really yeah. Cardiff, oh, you had to go in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to. But we did lose. We yeah, did so. lose the Grand Slam last year. So, yeah. No, I know. Well, like, kind of, what if, goes round comes I could say yeah, 2005, 2008, 2011. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> but kind of, no, look, it's kind of, we've, we've all been tested through the fire of those barren years. And, but kind of, the strange thing is, you always sit next. To, like you know, opposing fans. Mm. Remember Cardiff Blues against the Tigers? Yeah, you remember that. Games. Remember stand next to you, the concession stall, the candy, the candy concession stall in the View Centre in Cardiff the night before. And I said something quite drunkenly to you, and you just went. I <laughs> just said, yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry I, I was about being, that. I was being silly. Yeah, I was um, focused on the game. But I remember I was sat next to a guy who was, um, who was our product manager at Sony, a guy called Jim Fletcher. Who sadly passed away. Uh, he was an absolute genius book. Um, and he's a guy that worked with us at Sony, and he was a proper, proper, proper Leicester Tigers fan. He's all family now. Yeah. And uh, he was, I was sat next to him when Martin Williams missed the kick. Oh. So, of course, now, you know, we don't want to guess who's sang, too sanctimonious about what football and rugby are mm. as in terms of attitudes, because neither's perfect. But, you know, you know, the benchmark of what a, rugby, a good rugby fan will say to a losing rugby fan was I was sat next to Jim, God rest his soul. And as Martin Williams was that kick, you know, uh, kind of, I think it was John Crane mm-hmm. did the winning kick, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, kind of, you know, Jim just put his hand on my shoulder and he was just like, didn't want to win like that. No. It was terrible James kind of thing. And I kind of, I looked at him and I was just like, you know, he, was, he, was, he wasn't even making an act of it. He was just, he kind of had empathy for my loss kind yeah. of thing. Well, do you know what, Which we, is so we, were still, we were still on the pitch as players thinking, before the last kick went over, we actually came into a huddle. Uh, as a group, and we said, look, whether this goes over or not, if he misses, gets it, 
this isn't a moment to celebrate because this isn't the way to That's win the game. That's tough, I think. It was really hard, but yeah, it was, yeah. you know, it was true because Martin yeah. actually had, he'd had the best year. He'd, he'd retired, he'd come yeah, back yeah, to play, he'd, he'd had back, a phenomenal yeah. year, played, yeah. for, played for Wales, coming to the side, and, and to miss, to end his season. It would, yeah, that, it was, that. I, I actually went over to him when he missed it and he was on his hands. I remember he like, turned away to his left yeah. like that. And I think and just turned it. back, you know. Hey, look, you know, I, did, well, I would just like to say, you know, Job, you know, Jim Fletcher, our ex, yeah. you know, kind of compatriot, you know, work colleague and just proper, proper train spot and passionate, you know, Leicester Tiger fan. He exemplified what rugby's about and it's why we're you, you know. And uh, he was just, but he did say about half an hour later, I said to him, I said, God, you know, kind of, how do you kind of, how do you manage to be so nice and magnanimous about that? And he went, well, I'm pretty used to winning. So I thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, nice, <laughs> said, just rub that in there, said, yeah. the Leicester Tiger fan. He said, I thought, I thought I'd kind of like, you know, give, you know, be an empathetic yeah. shot. But he was a great guy. And that's what it exemplifies what rugby's about, and it's cool. Yeah. Well, James, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I can't let you go without asking you a prediction for tomorrow night. Obviously, you've got a gig tonight. You're going to get that out of the way, and then, uh, then it's going to be all, all eyes on the game. Uh, I'll, let you into, I'll let you into the kind of like soul of a musician. If a sportsman always deep down thinks he's going to win, mm. a musician is much more existentialist about it. I am going to sit on the fence. Are you really? I am, yeah. Okay. Because I, I don't want to curse it. I'm yeah. just going to lay a pan out now. Well, I I'm going to say Lions by three. I'm desperate for the guys to win. You are one of the most passionate fans I've ever met, James. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm just desperate for all the fans are out here spent all the money. Yeah. I'm desperate for all of us winning. You know, 20 years, we don't want that, do we? No. 20 years without winning. No, Pleasure enough. to meet you, sir. James, thank you very Papa much. Tiger's legend. Enjoy, enjoy the gig tonight. I'll be out there sweating again. I'll gotcha. try not to get on the shoulders this time. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks, Bill. Pleasure. <laughs>